One of the greatest lessons I've learnt from training exotic animals, like this bush stone curlew, a nocturnal bird of Central Australia, is the importance of giving an animal choice. Choice gives control, and control builds confidence in your animal. When you remove as much force from your repertoire as is safe for the animal and the trainer, a whole level of new reinforcers opens up to you because the animal will always choose what behaviour is most reinforcing to it at the moment. Here we're training our bush stone curlew to go into a pet pack. Obviously, eventually the pet pack will have a door on it, but at the moment we know that the most reinforcing thing for him is to actually be able to escape the pet pack should he need to. When he goes in, He'll be given reinforcement of mouse and bugs, all those sorts of food reinforcers that he likes. But we don't want to give him a situation where he feels so threatened because he's going to be locked in the pet pack that he doesn't want to go into the pet pack even for his most favourite kinds of food. Now at first glance, this can seem pretty counterproductive. We want him to stay in the pet pack and we are letting him come out when he wants to. How does this work? Well, he gets the choice of the reinforcer he wants. Both the food reinforcer and the chance to leave the pet pack reinforce the behaviour of staying in the pet pack. And when we give the animal this choice of which reinforcer they need at any given moment, in a pretty short time, we can't get them out of the pet pack. And this is exactly what we want. We want not only to build a behaviour, but we also want to build a level of confidence and understanding in our animal that we're never going to force them or threaten them in any way. This way we build confidence not only in the behaviour, but also we build the relationship of trust that we so desperately need when we're working free flight birds and other exotic animals in a zoological situation. Good bird. The choices that our animals make often can give us as trainers really important information as to how they are feeling about what we are asking them to do at that very moment. Here our leopard seal tells us that she's really feeling a little bit uncomfortable today, which meant that we did not take the steps we had planned to before starting the training session. While she hadn't had been going really well and hadn't balked at the transport crate as she did, did just then in the video for a long time, she did today and we're all reminded that we all have bad days, even if you're a leopard seal. It's really important to remember that, just like us, animals are constantly forming emotional associations. How an animal feels about what you're asking it to do is going to make things either much harder or much easier. The foundation of feeling plays a key role in the behaviour both we and our animals perform at any moment. So going back and helping Brooke with a target stick ensured that in the next session we were able to take our previously planned step of closing the door for just a few moments at a time while she remained relaxed and comfortable. So how do our animals tell us what is most reinforcing in any moment? Body language is key. All animals will orientate towards the point of reinforcement. Watching this video of Jacob Brown, a long-billed corella, that's a type of cockatoo found in Australia, you can clearly see how his body posture and balance of weight changes from the beginning of the video to the end. At the start of the video, he's leaning away. All of his energy is away from the scary skateboard. That's fine. He has control and can choose to work to gain the sunflower seed, one type of reinforcer, or work to increase the distance between him and the skateboard, another kind of reinforcer. But watch as his fear reduces and his feelings about the situation and the scary skateboard change. Slowly but surely, his orientation changes. Where his overall body posture was orientated away from the skateboard at the start, by the end, he is not only orientating towards it, he's going to be on it. And his body language is more determined and confident. While animals are not always as obvious as Jacob Brown is here, a good trainer will see the subtle shifts in body weight or the tiny movements of the head and respond accordingly. Being able to read these subtle cues is something that we can all learn by simply spending time observing animals. The other aspect of working with exotic animals in a free contact setting is remembering that every interaction you have with them affects how they feel about you. The experiences they have in your presence will either make them trust you more or trust you less. Trust is important when you're working with animals that can fly away or can kill you. 
placing a behaviour that the animal is telling you they want to do on cue gives you the control to use that as a reinforcer. That's what's happening here. The squid and fish are desirable for this sea lion, but not half as desirable as going back to where he feels comfortable. So telling him to go home when he is bravely taking another step in, into the unknown builds both the behaviour and trust in me. Remember the golden rule of training animals with positive reinforcement. It's the animal that decides what he's reinforcing, not the trainer. So what can we take away from this with our dogs? No matter what the animal, force is the enemy of confidence and trust. By watching your dog and placing all of their favourite activities under stimulus control, you bring a whole new level to your training. You stop being the party pooper who always says no to the best things in life and begin opening the door for them to a whole new world of good times. You gain control because from their experience, the all good things that are available come through you and your relationship grows. That's the power now, now. of positive reinforcement training. Already said well. go. Good puppy. Woohoo!